One of my favorite leadership stories that demonstrates a powerful leadership principle comes from Alan Mulally, the former CEO of Ford Motor Company. There was a day that a senior vice president came to him after Alan was fairly early in taking over the leadership of Ford Motor Company. And that senior vice president who had, uh, really was a friend of uh, Bill Ford and had kind of enjoyed a different culture, but that culture clearly wasn't working so well. And Alan Mulally took over and he was uh, bringing in and, and restructuring and, and demonstrating how important leadership principles are. And what happened was the senior vice president came to Alan and said, hey, listen, these meetings that you want us to have every week and be in person and that kind of thing, I, I'm really not into that. And a lot of people aren't into meetings. They think it's meetings for the sake of meetings. And Alan looked at him and said, no problem. It's okay if you don't want to participate in the meetings. It doesn't make you a bad person, in fact, but you do need to make a choice. This is the way the organization is going. And if you don't want to do it, that's fine. But you need to make a choice whether you want to be on the team or not. That is powerful. Because if you're a leader and you are not setting the standard, setting the tone, providing guidance and direction, and being consistent and resolved in that direction, there's no, there is no direction. It's basically anything goes. And the same way as I recently talked about culture and how culture attracts and a culture repels, you should not in your organization have to fire many people. In fact, when Alan Mulally took over at Ford Motor Company, Bill Ford said, hey, how many of my people, I know you're gonna change the culture a lot. How many of my people do you think you're gonna to have to fire? Alan thought for a second and said, not many. And Bill wondered how that would be possible. And Alan responded this way. He said, we are going to live our values and our culture. And those that don't want to may leave. They will self-select. Self-select. But he said, those that don't want to self-select, those that don't choose that this isn't the culture that they want anymore and leave on their own, we may need to help them. And those are the people that are complacent and you may need to fire. But ideally, or ultimately as a leader, you should just live your values, establish a clear and consistent culture that attracts the right people and repels the wrong people. And if you do that, you won't have to fire many people. Rather, you have consequential conversations about where the organization is going and when and how this is the right fit for the individual. People change, people have different desires, organizations change and have different directions. We will not all be in the same organizations for our entire career. Just accept that. Instead, when it becomes apparent that we're no longer going down the same path together, have the kind of conversations that will help a person to choose whether they wanna be on board or self-select and leave. If you do that, not only will you be having powerful conversations where people can adjust their behaviors and get on board, or they can recognize that they're no longer in the place where they need to be and where they're uh, aligned and a good fit for the organization and it's time to leave. So leaders, if you do that, there will be many ways that you will help to direct behaviors, reinforce a positive culture, create greater consistency and cohesiveness in your team, and start winning more. Try it.